Hi there, uh, I'm AWAC. I'm Gamma Dev. And uh, welcome back to our Let's Play video blogcast thing. We should really come up with a proper name for this or something. Well, well, this, is, well this is not even a Let's Play. This is a long play. <laughs> and, a, and, all because, and also because you're doing it. Uh -oh. You're doing all the playing in here. So. <laughs> hey, you were playing Soccer Kid last night. Uh, last night. Last, last time. Night, yeah. Last, yeah. Uh, we'll, have to, we'll, have to do a, we'll have to do a versus one on this. Or, oh, or dear. Like a return oh. fire kind oh, of thing. Oh, gosh. Um, and I, so I finally finished um, uh, level eight and uh, have that uh, queued up here on my laptop, which I will be playing for Gamma Dev. And so we can finally see Les's uh, little admonition at the end. This is, I guess, just to verify that you didn't use Game Guru to skip to the next no, level. Or no, <laughs> no, no. So I really, no, really did this, honestly. So we'll key this in and we'll see you in a few, few moments. So you never triggered any monster spawns on when you picked up the talisman, like to like just rush you from all corners of the room. No, we actually actually considered there was some vestigial code for like landing on a tile and then doors nearby opening. Yeah, what? Yeah. But that, but that, I couldn't make that work. There, I've I've seen that though in Monster Hunter where you'll go somewhere and the doors will open, right? No. Like in the very first level, I thought suddenly guys just, you hear a door open and then da, 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 the guy comes towards you or something. Um, nope. Mm -hmm. There, There is a door closing sound in the soundtrack, hmm. but I actually I actually did try writing code so that there'd be like this tile, then you walked on the tile and it would trigger the nearby doors either north, south, or east, west to, to open. The trouble is, is that it would get tripped twice. And so the door would go open, close. And I and Couldn't it took. It or I bit. tried. I tried various forms of debouncing, and ultimately, it. I, I couldn't make it work, and I'd already spent like two days on it. And I said, "Don't. I guess we're not doing this." Okay. Are well, those guys all taking multiple shots, or they're spitting at you? Um, I managed to uh, shoot these guys uh, before they started spitting at me. Hey, so, question on the gems: Are the gems? Sprites actually that those colors, or are they just tinted that? They are actually those colors oh, in the color map. Interesting. So, so here comes here comes less. Catacombs should be thought of as refrigerators for the dead. Our bones have kept quite nicely, I think. Do pay your respects as you wander underground. Even in death, our residents can take offense and call on ghastly comrades. Thank you, Les. Is that hinting at the, the monsters you're going to get? To the... no, sometimes they hint, and sometimes they just... It's uh... so weird that that's Les's voice, because I... I, You know, I can't put that voice to his face. <laughs> really? <laughs> when I talk to him, yeah. Because, you know, I'm used to... That's not his normal speaking voice, obviously. He's putting on his announcer voice. He's putting on his... Uh, what's his name? Thurl's Ravenscroft, or whatever that guy, that guy that used to do the Disney. Uh, he, did, he actually did the Haunted Mansion, oh, and he's like, right. "You're yeah, a mean no, one, he was, Mr. He, Grinch." Yes, <laughs> he was. He was. Um, he was. He was doing that. Yeah, but uh, no, he's good. I I actually uh, tried reading for the narrator, and uh, I, I wasn't nearly as good as he was. I tried doing it in a dark. I tried. I tried doing it in a lower register. It was just was Les already a voice actor at that point? Or? I think so. I'd be surprised if he wasn't. I mean, well, I mean, wouldn't have been doing video games before the 3DO because how many video games had, they weren't even hard that many CD-ROM video games before the 3DO, so oh, you would have to be doing it for cartoons. To make you happy. I... Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, I don't, I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, he, he might have been, been doing, doing television. Over. He might have been, he might have been doing, you know, read voiceovers for TV or Which, radio or something. Because, I mean, if he's, since he, he's from the Bay Area, so yeah. the thing is like... There's not as much work for TV and uh, stuff in the Bay Area compared there used for to that. Be, there used to be a respectful handful of radio stations. Of course, there's college radio around here. Yeah, so. but that's not, you know, yeah. I make a living doing that. But I'm just saying, <laughs> where it's like, if you got into video games, then it'd be a great niche because it's like most video game production at the time right. was and it's kind of still is in the Bay Area. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's you immediately build up a, a little yeah. relay to look yeah. up on IMDb and see if he has any like TV credits before. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we are now starting level nine. This is the which catacomb. Is, this is the catacomb level. I don't remember who came up with the art idea for this. I like. I want to think it's Kim, but yes, yeah, skulls everywhere. 
It's like the, the mountain from uh, Return of the King, right? <sighs> now the music is all serious and organy. <laughs> Um, this uh, yeah, this is a, a spider ghost level. And if I can cheat over here, because I really don't like dealing with these. Ah, uh, you got loose. Tony, if you have the source code to this, you really should uh, port this <laughs> to Android. Um, I, I, or, I, I've or let me. <laughs> I, uh, I've considered it. I've actually seriously considered it. Um, be a good little exercise. It would, um, in, in you know graphics uh, and you know, input processing. I'm not sure how you would do the the controls because well, this is certainly easier than most of the other first person shooters they would do because this is this can be done on a D pad rather easily. So right, except that the the the, sh the side step is maybe a little tricky, but. Yeah, but I don't know. It's, well, not that I've played many first-person shooters on Android, but I just get the impression that just trying to steer by press, putting your fingers on the thing you're trying to look at uh, is well, just a big pain in the neck. Well, I would first of all, I would naturally support external controllers because that's my. I mean, that's why I got an Ouya. I finally played my Ouya. But oh, way. you got an Ouya? Yeah. Cool. I told you that, and you said, "Hey, how is it?" And I said, "No, I had. I didn't have it at the time. It was on order. It finally uh -huh. arrived. Um, a little disappointing because they can't uh -huh. use the Google Store. They can't. No. Why not? At this point, they didn't. I don't know if the. I assume it's a licensing deal. No, oh, jeez. But so all the games I have, I can't use unless I want to rebuy them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did. They did a few things smart. Like they do. They copy the Xbox Live Arcade model, which every game has to have a demo. Mm-hmm. So you can at least try all these games. And I th the big game they have in there right now is Final Fantasy III. Um, oh. So you want to play your SNES uh, RPG? There you go. I think the other, they, they, they have a few other games. I saw, you know, one, but their one's already bought. You know, like Pinball Arcade. I already have Pinball Arcade. And I was actually excited to play it on a big screen with a controller. Although I can do that on the Xbox, mm -hmm. but I'd already bought it for the for Android, <laughs> and a ton of tables for Android, and I can't use it unless I hack the Ouya mm. to uh, have the Google Store on it. I don't. Yeah. Well, if you can ex install external APKs, it's probably not terribly hard. Yeah, but doesn't the DRM not work if the the store is not there? Uh, that Cause... that I don't know. So yeah, it's. Yeah, so we'll see. I I would not be surprised though if the thing went, the thing actually launches this week at retail. My understanding. Oh my gosh. Um, but uh, my understanding is, I I would not be surprised if they relent on that and realize that uh, we do have to have the Google Store in there for this to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Oh the yeah, that's another one of uh, Kim's little uh, Kim's little. Uh... Easter eggs I think they there. stole that for Deathkeep. I remember they had a lot of uh, guys that would hang uh, in cages from the ceiling. But then they took it one step further, which is as you went past them, the enemies would burst out of them oh. and drop down. So they were like monster spawners, essentially. Yeah, yeah this is just a bitmap animation. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> it's nice. So. Oops. And the fact that it's a, a circular spinning cage also helps. The fact that it's a, a billboard polygon. <laughs> For those of you playing at home, a billboard polygon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Is a two D object that you put in three D space, so it always it, it always faces the player, to give the appearance of a three dimensional object. But if you do for something that's naturally like, if you put, had like a cube there, it wouldn't work because it'd look like the cube was always rotating towards you because well, it's a two dimensional object that's always facing you, so it would look kind of odd. But so if you make something that's circular or spinning in 3d like these gems here you can't tell it's actually a billboard object and not a 3d object right no oh, hi there hello mr ghost oops that it's just a sprite stuck in the world mm -hmm. at the correct spot so here's the door and there's the key for it right behind us. <laughs> hmm. hmm well wait a minute isn't there a gate on the other side so basically it's like an this is like an exit to something. So there's a little maze. I mean, is uh, there... What does the map say there? Because it's like... 
In other words, if that's on both sides by locked gates, then there's no point to the key, right? Well, you know, well it's, a, it's a no. It's a null operation. Well, well it, I think what it's you use a key to like get go, a key. Yeah, go, go go the long way to get inside. Yikes! Go go the long way to get you know to get over here. Yes, the spider is strafing. Yeah. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Anyway, anyway the reason I thought this is yesterday about uh, Karatika or Karatika, depending who you are. Oh, um, for Android. <laughs> That, that was an old uh, Apple game, wasn't yes, it? Yes, and they yeah, well they, they by Broderbound, Broderbound, yeah, and Jordan Mechner, aka Prince of Persia guy. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, he apparently found the original source code when oh, he was doing the remake of uh, there 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 was a remake for Live Arcade and Android uh -huh. of Prince of Persia where you know it's it's still basically two D gameplay but it's you know it's it's all done three D and it's all mm. you know it's a little more elegant and. Like they justify the three lives thing by just by virtue of the fact that you have three different characters who make attempts at the castle. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, that's cute. <laughs> A way to justify just the, the fact that why do we have three lives in video games? Okay, they're actually three different suitors attempting to storm the castle. And have fun storming the castle. Exactly. So, but this version is actually a remake of the Apple II version. Uh, it's an emulator, right down to the, you can pick the, do you want the green screen? Do you want the RGB screen? Oh or do you want boy. the amber screen? I love the fact that you put the amber, because that's the kind of monitor I had for my Apple II. Was, ah. It was a third-party amber monitor. Not just, not because my parents were cheap, but because it looked nicer. <laughs> Of the of the monochrome screens uh, available back in the day, I think amber was my least favorite. Really? Yeah. I thought it was easier on the eyes. I just couldn't stand the Apple green monitors. I didn't like the Apple green monitors. I much preferred the IBM green monitors. Yeah. They had a different phosphor that had this just lovely emerald hue to it. Hmm. Um, but yeah. apparently that was more expensive. Hmm. And usually these... Oh, hello. Usually these... Um, uh, these particular monitors were um, uh, those uh, IBM 37 something or other terminals that uh, coupled into mainframes. Oh, hi. I didn't see so that. So were they actually monitors or were they actually terminals? They, they, were, actually, they were actually terminals. Ah, yeah. So, so, you, did, so, so you, you couldn't actually use them with another No, yeah, unfortunately not. Yeah. So they also had a long, much longer persistence, so they would like smear. Hmm. Not good for playing Rogue, right? No, no, no. Well, great for playing Rogue. Not so great for playing um, Wolfenstein. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the uh, yeah the he even emulates the disc sound of the Apple II. Yeah, that one. Oh, which, da, 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 which one? There were like two different, uh, yeah. two different models. Well, the five, and, you know, the five and a quarter inch. Well, thing. yeah, but there were two um, stepper motor uh, constructions at least that I was aware of. Um, one was, and the earlier one was, yeah, and so. I think the second one. Yeah. More like it. I still, well, I still remember just the sound of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the it's, startup. That's it seeking back to zero. Basically, seek backwards 40, and you're and you're bound to land on track zero, mm -hmm. because there was no track zero detect, because that switch cost money. Still. It was still a, yeah. a wonderfully cheap, wonderfully fast disk mm -hmm. drive. I used to yeah. couldn't believe why people had Commodore sixty fours and like, really, this is your disk drive. It's taking you a minute to load this off your disk drive, but yes. it's a really smart one. Yeah, it's really the, stupid if it's that Commodore fifteen forty one floppy drive loads data faster than you can type it. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing was that thing had a processor that was actually more powerful than it was in the Commodore sixty four itself, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a sixty five oh two in there. Yeah. Which, <laughs> but it was the slowest thing on the planet. It's like, um, wow, all those brains in here. Wow, well, we should get so we should get some of the ex Commodore people in here because apparently there's a story behind that. I only I only know it sort of like in. Well, did you have an Apple II or 30, you had a? I was a Commodore guy. Couldn't I just couldn't justify spending twelve hundred dollars for, for the machine for for Apple, especially yeah. especially once the Atari yeah. eight hundred and and company were out and. You know, 64K machines were going for sub $600, and they were still asking 1200 for the Apple II 48K. Mm. And it's like, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah. But, no, the story I heard is that um, they, had, they had done the 1541 drive, and it was all smexy and everything. It was, you know, coming out, coming out really nicely. Hmm. Uh, You're doing a Sigma map here. What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, And uh, what they what they had done was that they had um, 
they, they, they tuned it for the Commodore 64, and then at the very last minute, management says, oh, it's got to work with the VIC-20 as well. Hmm. And he went, but the timings are totally different, and it's just not going to work well. He's just like, well, too bad. We're not doing two SKUs. Because you know, we're phasing out the 1540. Uh, and so... Uh, they had to like redo the firmware. Also, Vic so Twenty basically work, so the same work on both of them. Well, also, it didn't it didn't help that the Commodore sixty four every eight video lines would just go away for um, forty microseconds to fetch the next line of uh, of video of video RAM. So, so that was See, that was a minor. There, problem. there was a certain Which elegance though the Apple too. Pardon yeah. me, because you know it was all frame buffer based and everything. So basically, anything you could do in well, a frame buffer, good. Yeah, right, well, right I mean, go. well, the, the Commodore 64 is a frame buffer as well. You just had to set it up uh, ahead of time. Um, I and mean, that was very common back then, is you had, you had the character cell mode, and then you had the bitmap mode. And the Apple II's bitmap mode was insanely laid out. Um, because <laughs> save a couple gates. <laughs> save, save a couple gates, or actually, a, a, the, well, I mean, it's probably that, but also um, the Thank story you. I heard is that at that time, the XOR gate, cheap, right. the quad XOR gate was cheaper than the quad NAND gate, which is what w he would have used. So he used the, the cheaper gate. And yep. uh, and then they yep. had that weird layout. Hey, but it, leaves, it gives a cool transition effect, the Venetian blinds effect. Yeah. Think of it as like very early uh, pixel swizzling. You know? <laughs> <laughs> For the very same reason of like, well, okay. These things put these things logically next to each other, <laughs> do physically next to each other. Yeah, no, I back back in those days um, to decide whether or not I was going to seriously consider buying a machine, I would get the uh, programmer's technical reference manual for the machine. I still have, I could go dig it out of my bookshelf right now. I still have the uh, technical reference for the Apple II, um, and after looking at that, I said, no, I'm not going to, not going to bother with this. Uh, even though even though it's very popular, um, it was uh, also the same way I decided I was never going to bother with the IBM PC because I bought a book on the 8086, um, and prior to that my exposure was the 8080 and the 6502, and I said, you know, as as dreadful as the 6502 was, the 8086 was worse, <laughs> so I said no, nope, not going to bother with it, and uh, I've done almost nothing with the uh, x86 line uh, at least yeah. on an assembly code level. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, well, nowadays, is an X86 yeah, nowadays it's not even worth it because you know, it's all it's all 64 bit stuff now. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't looked into that at all. But I mean, at some after like, you, you know, still 10, write 20... x86 code, but then internally it's going to be translated to their own internal 64 bit. Uh, right. Yeah. Massively optimized, registered out the laws. <laughs> so that was sort of the approach. Um, oh, man, I forgot the name of that company that. Um, did a software, sort of a firmware emulation of the x86 that um, that uh, Linus Torvalds Torvold, worked for for a while. Hmm. But I can't remember the name of it. Somebody will obviously comment on it. Somebody, oh, oh, God. Yeah. Right. Spider Alley. Fortunately, I'm full up on it. <laughs> Jeez, the, the frame rate suggests that there's a lot more going on than I can see. This is kind of like the worst case because you have this long, long ass hall, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing there. The, uh, but no, I mean, just the, the, the elegance of that architecture on the Apple II. It was, so you know, the expansion slots on that. It's like, that was like, because like, I, you never installed a driver for an expansion device on the, the Apple II. No, but. Well, okay. So it just kind of worked. I was just like, oh, wait a minute. No, How did we have no, that? no. I think I think there are some things like the eighty column card that you had to have some sort of client side, you know, application side support. Hmm. Um, I don't know. There's certainly enough uh, rogue eighty column cards out there that uh, you didn't. There was no. There was definitely no driver installation on this thing. And there certainly wasn't. Well, there, any was, cer firmware there, there was some. On, there was some onboard firmware for. Yes, for there was some for certain type of stuff, but there was obviously things that were invented after. The ROMs were set in stone that I didn't have to install drivers for. Like people had CPU accelerators on the thing. We were just like, really? you could put a whole, yeah, you could put a whole CPU on a expansion card. And people put six five eight one six on there, Z eighties oh. on cards and stuff like that. I remember, I remember the Z eighties. 
Um, and it was just like, wow, it just works. Ram, same thing. And it's like, wow, he, you know, that was stuff that was giving IBM problems up until the 2000s. It was like, oh, IRQs, you got to get the, yeah. oh, you can't have these two cards next to each other. You know, get the... Because they conflict. Why? Can't you route it yourself? I'm sorry, our switching fabric. That's why, I mean, I thought that was the norm because that was my first computer was the Apple IIe. And then, you know, Commodore got the Zorro slots that just magically worked as well. Those, those were pretty good. And um, then you get not, to IBM and it's like, what the? IRQ conflict? What the? F-? <laughs> or worse, you know, blue screen of death. The, 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 the oh, geez, not multi channel. Um, the bus in the PS2, the IBM PS2. Yeah, P- um, see, there you go. IBM MCA. PS2, not the PlayStation dude. That's IBM correct. PS2. IBM PS2. The one micro channel architecture. Micro, that's it. Thank you. Apparently, was a collision based, collision avoidance based uh, bus, and you basically pull, say, okay, do I have the bus? Do I have the bus? Do I have the bus? Is anybody on the bus? Is anybody the bus? Well, nobody's on the bus. I think I can use the bus. Collision? What do you mean collision? So, <laughs> well, but that still worked better than than ISA slots. And, uh, and true PCI. enough. PCI. ISA yeah. was pretty much a direct. Uh, ISA was pretty much a direct um, exposed sort of very very S one hundred y in that respect. It was just basically the the address lines leading into the CPU. Yeah, that's with with, with no logical yeah, translation that's, at all. It's really weird. So oh you need um, okay, so you've got a four K this board has four K of memory on it. Where do you want to locate it in the overall sixty four K address space? Yeah. Flip the dip switches over here. You know. Yeah. It was like, you know Jump up. There we go. You know. They got much they got a lot of life out of the Apple too. They, they started like, oh, graphics mode. We'll just Add more memory on the 80 column card. Boom, double high res. And now we can play King's Quest. And... No, they did. They did. They did. There was a lot of good stuff that was done on the Apple II. It was, was quite, is quite a it, well, yeah. guy. So. Quite brilliant. Um, I remember hearing a story. Apparently, Waz used to hang out at Atari. Well, you, there's, there's way more of that. That story. <laughs> I, I think uh, we, well, no, we, no, we no, might even told us on the broadcast about the about the uh, about breakout. Oh, so you have heard that story? Yeah, okay, that's I think we, I, I think we tell. told this on here about oh, you know. No, how... I don't think we told this on air. Um, but uh, you might, I don't know, you may know, remember more details. Uh, I heard it from Al Alcorn, but um, oh, okay. Well, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, he was he was giving a talk and he yeah. was just like you know told the story of hey you know. <laughs> well, I mean, there's been many, many variations of it, but mm-hmm. I, I think Waz finally came clean on it after. With the official version after Steve Jobs' death, oh, which is like they had a falling out over this whole incident, hmm. which was Steve Jobs was an employee for Atari, mm-hmm. um, but apparently he wasn't a real engineer. <laughs> no. He kind of BS'd his way around into yeah. being an engineer, and then he'd go home and ask and have, Waz, have Waz to do it, do uh, do the actual work. Um, and one of the projects was Breakout. Uh, Breakout was an, you know, precursor to Arkanoid. One of the Atari's big early hit arcade games, you know, paddle game, break the blocks, all that stuff. Yeah. And this was all done with discrete logic. There's no CPU in this thing. So this is all just AND gates and AND gates and, right. and you know, individual components that, you know, nowadays would be a few lines of, uh, code. And there's a story behind that too. Mm-hmm. Um, so the trick on these games was, okay, it's all discrete logic. So you go down to Radio Shack, you buy your little chips, and you put yep. them out on breadboard, and you wire them up, and hopefully you can get... you powered up, and you've got a Get a running. display on the screen, and yeah. then get it to do something. You know, Pong was the earliest version of this, and Breakout was sort of like solo Pong with a, with a goal of breaking bricks. Yeah, so so break all the bricks out so they, to clear the level, so and they had the, the game, next level. And... So they had the game worked out at Atari. And I think it was using like a couple hundred chips, which is every chip that you can get reduced translates into thousands of dollars for the company because you have to buy the chips, you have to install them, installing yeah. them takes a lot of thing, increase the complexity. Yeah. Each, any one of the connections on any one of those chips, as somebody who's done wire wrap in college, it's not fun. Uh, trying to figure out which one of these connections is bad. So mm-hmm. it, the number every chip is worth a certain amount of money in terms of production costs and you multiply this over the number of things that are going to go out it's just it's huge so mm-hmm. they put a they gave jobs steve jobs the a task of getting this down to below to as few chips as possible and they gave right. him a goal of like i think it was like 
anything you can get below 50 will give you like some some obscene amount of money like per chip i, I heard it was something like a thousand dollars per a thousand dollars per chip below and like th- like 40 50, or 30 chips 50, or something yeah. like yeah so, so he hands it off to Waz. Waz. So yeah. yeah, he did it to Waz, and he told him, it's like, oh, uh, they'll pay me something like 100 bucks per chip under 50 mm. So, okay. So Waz is doing it, and he gets it down to something, I think it was like 34. I heard, it, I heard it was like 28. So 30, 34, ridiculously 28. small. Yeah, it yeah. was like well below what Atari had expected to yeah. pay. So Jobs turns this in. Uh, he gets paid the bonus. Right. Jobs then goes back to Wozniak and says, you know, they reneged on the deal. They only gave us a, a bonus of X. I'll split it with you. And he, and he pocketed the rest for himself. So that, he, he gave, him, part I he gave him like literally like 10% of what Jobs got for the thing. Yep. He was a marketer. Yes. Uh, Jobs found about, about this many years later. I mean, Waz found out. Waz found out many years later, and they didn't speak to each other for a couple of years after that. Um, they were He was just furious with them. Because like, at that point, both of them were worth tens of millions of dollars uh-huh. just from their Apple stock. But it was the whole principle of thing yeah. that he would, you know, that, you know, not just only was he getting him to do his work for him, he mm-hmm. lied about the bonus to him twice you know first the amount he was originally going to get and then the amount he finally got he he you know what jobs got the the final amount the really funny part of the story is they gave him the they gave jobs the bonus but they didn't use waz's layout in the actual arcade no, game because, because it was nobody so, understood it. nobody could figure out how it worked yeah. they said we can see it works but we don't understand how it works. Therefore, we don't know if there'll be some catastrophic failure after a hundred games or something that's, well, that puts was, porn up on the screen or I, something. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it, it says was, F you Atari or something yeah. <laughs> when you reach the hundredth level or something. So I they, think it was more along the lines of, you know, if these machines break in the field, there nobody nobody will be able to under, diagnose them. So no, uh, they didn't use well, that design. Yeah, I mean I mean, I, if something broke in the field, they could literally just say, well, replace the chip that has the bad connection and it'll magically work again. We don't understand why. Uh-huh. But yeah, so, but yeah, that's, that's kind of funny. So, but that whole experience of making breakout was why Waz put uh, AppleSoft Basic in the Apple II because he remembers this little exercise. He said, I would be great if I could just do this all on the CPU and code. And so he said, uh, so he, basically any command he needed suddenly got app, ad, added to AppleSoft Basic to put in his breakout. And that's why breakout's like the example that comes on, would come with your disk on disk as one of the example programs oh. of how to use AppleSoft Basic when you got an Apple II. Complete with the code. It's like, oh, so, it's so like, just added, he, it's so like, he added commands so that he could write ba- breakout. Yeah. No, oh, good for him. All the graphic commands and all the sound commands and all that stuff that are in AppleSoft Basic good for him. are because like, hey, I want to be able to write my own breakout in less than X number of lines of code. Mm. And so that's why breakout's in there. And that's how I, I wish, learned to I, program. I, <laughs> uh, I, wish, I wish more uh, engineers would do that. It's like, I have a particular, I'm not here to just design an API. I'm here to uh, like accomplish well, a specific goal. Well, yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> when I make an API, I always do that. Because it's like, first thing I try to do is like, well, can I do this? It's like, can I make this? Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that the artist will Ooh. will want to do <laughs> will want to use it. But yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah, that 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 is the whole. That's why I was thinking. It's like if you report this to Android, it'd be a wonderful learning exercise for somebody. Yeah, yeah. Oops, I pushed. I'm although opening you, a door, although, shooting uh, spiders. I, I so I mean, does Studio 3D own the rights to this, or does EA I, own the rights to this? Because they were the publisher. EA was the, the publisher, but I don't know who actually owns it, and if. Trip still owns it. I, he he kept some of the stuff when when 3DO folded. He kept some of it, like um, like Twisted I, or something. I don't know. <laughs> Twisted would be one I would I would actually think he would have kept just because he sees his that name would, is on there as like the the guide or the like the the guiding principle. Some, yeah, what he, his name is in the credits or something. It's like, his name's in the credits of this game too. I mean, yeah, but I, he had had some kind of smarmy sounding thing and and Twisted. It was sort of like you know. Our guiding light, or something. not, not quite that bad, but uh-huh. almost <laughs> like that. <laughs> checking your keys. Yeah, checking my keys. Oh, this. Oh, it's that. All right. So. Would a HUD have killed you? <laughs> a HUD would have gotten in the way. Ah. Okay. 
How about option for HUD in in, in Monster Manor 2.0? Uh, I think yeah, I think I'll we'll consider that, especially since every display, even cheap ass cell phones, have higher resolution than this machine. Hello. Okay. Okay. Is anybody in there going to kill me? Cause... Now see if you just made this. So if you did this on a widescreen display, you'd have plenty of room on the sides for the controls. True. True. Strafe and turn could be, you know, on either side. That's, I mean, that's that's probably how I would do it, is I would put it, like, on the, the extrema of the display so that the center remains, un, you know, unsullied, <laughs> so to speak. Ah! Unsm unsmudgied? Yeah, unsmudgied. <laughs> hey, there's a talisman. Okay, now, don't get greedy. <laughs> How's your health? Health is okay. See, this would have been a pretty thing of like, pick up the talisman, boom, those caves burst open, and you got uh -huh. a little hell beast to fire. You know? There's even a nice sound when you do it, too. <laughs> All right, so, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Is this one of Stefan's? I don't know who did this one. It sure feels like one of Stefan's. Where is Stefan these days? I don't know. He's He's kind of famous now. Kind of got, he's kind of got his own... Uh, his own thing going. So I'm gonna mm. Reserve keys. I'm gonna conserve keys. I don't so, think it's as important on this one as it is on the next one. So when you win the game, yeah, do you get an FMV video? Yes. Ah, he is, said. Is, is he just, said cryptically. Is it just this? Is it the same as the opening, just played backwards? Or no, it? no, it's just very, very brief. Look, the Could, talisman now reforms, and you go back out the window, and you fly the other way. No, that's that's the um, that's the alone in the dark ending. Um, uh, no, it's it's very very brief because we didn't have time to do anything super super wonderful. Because yeah. uh, somebody was, I was yeah. Cause somebody, there's been a lot of discussion on the 3DO forum, mm -hmm. 3DO zero forum. By the way, I have to say something about that. Oh yeah. I love the fact that there's a fan site. I can't stand that it's called 3DO zero or 3D zero. <laughs> That's right. It was never 3D zero. Yeah. It was and 3DO. I see people... Audio, video, radio, 3DO. Yeah. That was and the so entire conceit. I love that there's a fan site, but I don't know why they chose that name. If that's, A, just a misunderstanding, or if they were being snarky. It's possible that 3DO <laughs> was taken, so they took 3D0. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and I, I, I don't... That's, I, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't intentional they did this, but that name is, is like literally nail or fingernails on a chalkboard to anybody <laughs> who was around when the 3DO came out. And the reason for that is this was the this was like the 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 uh, the taunt name that people of other consoles would use when referring to the 3DO. This mm. is the 3D zero. It's like oh, it's a failure. It's the 3D zero, not the 3DO. Just like the you can I, I'm you can guess some of the ones that were there for like say the Jaguar. Mm -hmm. um, just Gag barely. Gone, I think it was one of them. <laughs> yeah, you're off by one letter. Oh. Um, <laughs> 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 or Jag whore, I think, was another oh, really? one. Okay. Like, yeah, they were gonna. Yeah, they're they're pretty mean. Three D O. There wasn't much you could do with it other than three D zero. So it's kind of like it's kind of like the taunt name. So whenever I see it, and I I see people use it in reviews, they'll just like. I get that they if they've read that and they just read it incorrectly mm -hmm. that they read that as a zero and they thought, well, look, there's already one number in the name, so what? Yeah, and there's one left. Is so. there anything over here that's uh, helpful? No, there's not. Uh, okay, you, run away. Right. Run away you could take away. a corner there somewhere, dude. <laughs> yeah, but well, what I need is ammo. I yes, think. I know, but I'm saying, you know, you know there's ghosts down those two holes, so you might want to take one of those side holes. <laughs> or I could just go where I know there's you ammo. You might want to get some help, too, since you're going to be stabbed very quickly here. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Are you going back towards the village? Why don't you guys stay back there? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I go. Pro tip there. <laughs> Ghosts can't phase through solid objects in this game. <laughs> uh, oh. They're in, oh, wait. They're, let, let's just assume they're iron gates, right? So sure. iron, I guess spectrals can't do well against iron if too human is to be believed or something. Um, but yeah, so people say 3D0. I just, uh So that's, that just grates. Personally. Yeah, I mean, I understand how people can do it if they misread it in a magazine. And mm. I'm sure many magazines misread printed it. it certainly yeah. any game that or any make game magazine that referred to it in the sense of retro i uh -huh. see it all the time as 3d zero um most of them at the time 3d themselves would correct them on that 
Mm-hmm. But uh, it, but then again, game magazines were never good for their technical details of any kind. So Ooh. like I, I remember when M2 was being discussed, and I saw, more than one magazine I saw referred to MIT mapping instead of MIP mapping. Oh gosh! And obviously, this was a phone conversation over a dirty line. He, well. Yeah, and the funny thing was, it wasn't just they got the letters wrong. Instead of, you know, P, they got T. Mm-hmm. Somebody, one magazine even decided, because they have to sound intelligent, <laughs> to actually yeah. have a story as to why it's called MIT mapping. It's like, well, it's invented by MIT, yeah. Media Lab. And it's like, uh, no. <laughs> a, that's not called MIT mapping. B, All it doesn't right. stand for MIT. <laughs> so... Mip mapping, guys, is... Um, it's Latin. Multi- multiple images. multi Oh, really? Many, okay, yeah, that many, I didn't know. Many, many things in one spot. Oh. Yeah. Right. So, this is what Wiki, This is what we have Wikipedia for nowadays, but this uh, is the days before there was Wikipedia, before there was really much of a World Wide Web is when the 3DO was some out. Some guy yeah. sitting around going, how, what, how can I, some guy at, uh, what is it, uh, Silicon Graphics going, how can I make this uh, as obtuse as possible? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll use Latin. Yes. But yeah, I, so I see 3D zero just like that's just like that nails on the chalkboard. <laughs> Oops. It literally just I just stop every time I see that. It's just like, <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's like my eyes can skim over anything except that. <laughs> it's just like I just draw into that zero. It's not round enough. It's not enough. Yeah, I mean, yes, you Got could, you could fault it. that with yeah, and then probably that's how it turned out. So my, you know, just. Couldn't read in the font. Couldn't tell if it was a zero or an O. So, mm-hmm. how did I leave this behind? Wow! All right, where you am picked I up a gem, and then when uh, you pick up the gem, it go spawn. Like, <laughs> if it were a modern modern game, uh, like, yeah, it's, it's like an, oh, I just you know you just check the ventilator shaft, and now a necromorph is going to spawn out of it. <laughs> hey, hey, let's not go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you mean? It's, it, it's a shaft. It can, you know, you can transit between. Hello. Yeah, you're. you're <laughs> well, now you're just taunting. You're playing rope a dope with the ghost. Rope a ghost. <laughs> What's wrong with that? It's trying to kill me. Oh, yeah. But back to, to, back stabity, to, stabity, stab. Back to the FMV uh, thing I was really trying uh-huh. to talk about was because uh, on the 3 0 uh, forum, yeah. <laughs> there's a discussion like. Why is there such a wide range of quality of FMV and 3DO games? Okay, first of all, not unique to 3DO by a long shot. No. And yeah, a lot, like um, a lot of reasons for that. And I'm guessing this is being one of the earliest games is like you're using one of the earliest uh, Cinepak compressors yep. uh, on the market. Mm-hmm. And so the answer to that is many is one is like, what codec are they using? Right. Two, do they have somebody who knows how to use the tool? How to tune the codec, yeah. Is the tool any good? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Does it have any feedback? I'm guessing like the very first ones were just like straight ports of like whatever the Cinepak Corporation gave you a straight C port. Basically, if you had a 25 megahertz 68020 with 16 megabytes of RAM, you were considered really, really fortunate. You had a monster machine. That was just an amazingly powerful system. And there was no way you were going to do real-time anything. You could do real-time video capture, uncompressed, just barely. Um, but, like, real-time feedback of the of the codecs, no. Right. And, just, not, and forget, well, not even real that. It's like it could take you, if you had, like, a one-minute clip, it's probably going to take you, like, a half hour to compress it on your Mac. Or more, like, more like... Yeah, well, one minute? Okay, half an hour, yeah. yeah. See, extra but, and the funny thing is oh, that... Oh, gee, I wonder where the exit is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that ratio doesn't change much as time has gone on. Uh-huh. Um, in the sense that codecs now take up more and more CPU time, more and more resources. You're compressing HD video nowadays instead of yes. standard def. And, you know, if you want high quality, you actually do have to spend that amount of time to compress something you know you do you do have to spend like a 30 to 1 ratio often to compress something hmm nice of them all line up and file like that though yes <laughs> now i'm out of stuff but luckily you can close the door so they're stuck 
Okay. I suppose now, you can. I suppose you can. I suppose you can run past them, right? Uh, well, you could. They just pursue you. Yeah, but I mean, if the exit right's there, you could get it. You could get them. Oh, but the guardian. Sack. You still have to get the guardian, right? Yeah. But is there ammo there? If you can run. There's past? no. There's, I'm looking for. No, I mean, now. in that room that they're in, is there ammo? I didn't see. You can't tell by looking at the map. Ah. Oh, jeez. Look at that. Gee, you could have done something, couldn't you? Oh, jeez. I'm going to have to go all the way back. Because uh -oh. I don't know where But yeah, is. even even on the last game, I I was brought in to fix the FMV quality. Mm -hmm. because, and the, the reason this happens is because if you use... The main problem is if... In video games is if you're on a unique piece of hardware... Mm -hmm. That means you have to have your own custom compressor, uh, compression software, right. to output it if it doesn't take the absolute standard format that you can get anywhere else, and which means they're going to do it as simply as possible, which means a command line tool yep. that just barely gets the job done. <laughs> Yep. So that was how it was. That was how it was. In, oh, hey, there we go. That was how it was on um, on so video if, as well. So if it looks good enough for whatever you're compressing, yeah. you're probably not going to do many more cases other than that. No. If it's an in-house tool, sadly. Yeah. Um, no, there was there was stuff. I mean, I didn't like the look of Cinepack. I didn't like its ordered dither look. But it's all we had. Uh, Duck came like a year later. Mm -hmm. um, nobody really used it. Uh, as I, and I said, "Oh, this looks much better." But I, everyone kept using Cinepack, I think, because it came free with the with the dev kit. Well, Duck. No, a lot of people use Duck. Horde is famously the opening videos to the Horde are famously done in Duck. Right, but that was the only one I saw it in. Was Horde. no, I think pretty much Crystal Dynamics did like most of their games after that with it. Oh, okay. Because they have some nice full screen. But you can you can definitely tell that a lot of people were using that, or they were later they were using things like. Um, that one that 3DO specifically had made available, which was Easy Flix. I think or I think one of like the last. Well, there was Easy Flix and Easy Squeeze. Easy Squeeze was the one I think used on Twisted on the black and white stuff. Uh, okay, yeah. And Easy Flix was their full screen thing. I think they ended up using that on some of the American Laser game later games. Ah, uh, okay. Because and you can tell because somebody said because that was one of the things that was brought up in 3DO. It's like why is there such a huge jump in quality between Mad Dog McCree One, which had to be done in Cinepack because mm -hmm. it's so early. And I want to say like either Mad Dog McCree two or one of the the absolute last ones they did like Shootout at Old Tucson or hmm. or Last Bounty I can't remember which one it was Last Bounty Hunter or Shootout at Old Tucson and it's just different codecs the tools got better people got better using the tools they had mm -hmm. I mean I we you know like I said. I've worked at game companies where we've had in-house codecs and it's like, it's great for compressing the company logo mm -hmm. because that was probably the only thing they, when they oh, released it, they progressed yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. But then you release, it's like, Hey, I've got this scene in the graveyard at night and there's a slow camera pan across the moon. And wow, look at all those macro blocks. blocks. Yeah. Cinepack we... called, they want their compression back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think I even said Serpentine. that to one of the engineers once. It's like, take a look at this. Doesn't this look like, early 90s Cinepack to you. <laughs> like, well, yeah, sure. If you're doing dark scenes with mm -hmm. slow pans, yeah, that'll happen. It's like, well, okay, great. Then don't tell me I have to use this in, codec. <laughs> yeah. In making these videos, I've, I've spent a little time looking at FFmpeg um, to, because you kind of have to, because you got to transcode everything. Um, and the number of options just for H.264 for tuning it are massive yeah i mean there's just there's dozens well of yeah them. and that's the the beauty and like all these codecs at their heart have a zillion parameters that you can mm -hmm. tweak but how many of them get exposed in the tool you're using is a you know like i said if it's an in-house tool the mm -hmm. program is probably not going to expose all of them or bother with things like oh can i gather error information on a first pass to use it to optimize a second pass right. stuff like that and i had that on a, a game where we had to do a music video and it was like the worst thing you could ever feed to a compression algorithm. It was all these multiple transparent layers moving uh. in different directions uh. on top of slide, you're sliding slowly across different directions. Across the it almost would have been easier to do it like in real time, like do the mm. individual layers and then composite them in real time to get the uh, effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Did we fed to the in-house codec and it just like cried. I mean, it was just <laughs> like, <laughs> it, you, we couldn't get and the other thing was we were on a huge space constraint mm -hmm. on the gamecube we literally had like 10 the megabytes oh, left for the gamecube version of this thing and uh -huh. i and i just said i said 
we can't do it with this codec. And I, I said, go license, uh, just find somebody who has ported to the GameCube a copy of DivX or XVID or something, mm. and we'll use that. And they're like, well, no, we have, and literally I got pushback from the engineer who wrote the codec we were trying to use, mm -hmm. who said, no, I've got this data chart that proves that this is better than those guys and for error and stuff like that. And they're like, okay, here, let, let me show you what I can compress here. Uh -huh. Let me show you a DivX version I did in three minutes with a free piece of tool online. <laughs> uh -huh. and... Which, and it's like, well, sure that, you know? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> And, you know, it's like it's not, nothing against his skill as an engineer or anything. It's like, mm -hmm. but, you know, something like DivX has a bunch of free tools online that have been pounded on by thousands of hackers trying to fit their, you know, Dragon Ball Z animes onto a single CD. Yeah. So they have optimized the bejesus out of this thing. They have found every bit to squeeze out of this, how to make everything look good, how, you know, mm -hmm. all this stuff that, you know, this guy may have spent a year working on it, but that's still only one engineering year on it, as opposed yeah. to, you know, thousands of people on the internet banging on this, you know, just to archive their video collection and make right. it look, or, you know, archive, oh, let's, <laughs> archive. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sure. Put it on their NAS. Right, exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Maybe you should get the... We're um, in the money. Yeah. I hope this makes you feel rich. <laughs> The richest Weird. man in the cemetery. Oh. oh my gosh, it's a big room. Look at that big room. And you're nowhere near. The, uh, there's the exit. There's all the exit. The so yeah, so I've, I've got some cleaning out yet to do. So yeah, so and that's what we ended up doing. It's like for the GameCube version, we licensed DivX. It worked like a champ. Mm -hmm. It fit all in uh, that. I mean, it was it was like a two minute music video. And we had to fit into like ten megs. It was just like no Whoa, way, no way. And it looked great when really? we got done with it. Yeah, I was I was super impressed with this thing when we were done with it and they, they were amazed too because they thought they were gonna have to like replace the whole music video with like still shots or something like it was freaking snes game or something like that so yeah divix was um sort of didn't divix inform the design of h264 uh it's they're all from the kind of the same genre thing it i think originally if i remember correctly divix starts off as microsoft one of a Microsoft technology that people kind of hacked up. They would uh -huh. like use Microsoft's DLL and then hack it up. Uh -huh. um, and then that, that sort of like spawned into VC1 and then H.264 kind of are basically on based on the same technology. I see. So, yeah. So it, it compresses really well. And if you throw a tool, I can't even think of what the tool is anymore um, for compressing and it's a free tool it has that wonderful interface of like you can see the compression you know mm. the source and the, the compression and it lets you do multiple passes and lets you plug in different codecs but uh it's like it was it was one of those cases where it's like you know you're going to waste more engineering time trying to make this thing look halfway decent than mm -hmm. if you just license the the you know right. common solution you know yes. it's like please get the not invented here out of your head you mm -hmm. know or not invented by me, you know. <laughs> and so, I mean, that that's part of the, So, you know, and DivX, as a codec, you know, when first people first got it, it was pretty crap. But then people figured out how to tweak it, and they figured out, you know, how to make stuff work with it. Mm -hmm. So, and figured out how to have tools that had feedback loops so you could see where the stuff was going. Because that was the thing I was... I ran on the last game where I was trying to make these videos. These had to be HD videos. They had to look good, but they had to be under a certain size because mm -hmm. we had bandwidth restrictions. And they couldn't do it. And the main reason was the tool was... The parameters didn't make much sense to the technical artist who was doing it. They were, and I couldn't blame her. You mm -hmm. know her, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. You actually know the person. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's no slouch. Yeah, she's... yeah. She actually does code herself and everything, but the parameters were sort of counterintuitive mm -hmm. where she's like, wait, it's getting worse as I'm doing this. And it's like, okay, well, try doing what the exact opposite of what you think you should be doing. <laughs> and oh, yeah, and, and sure enough, that was one of those, <laughs> one of those things where it's like, yeah, let's give it more, give it less bandwidth uh, for this. And suddenly it actually compresses better in terms of the look. And so, yeah, you know, it's just one of those weird things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just such a, so many different things that you can like fiddle with 
yeah, we'll take this one. And, you know, and also part of the problem was she was also running to other issues where it's like, yeah, she was hitting, she didn't realize she was hitting the bandwidth wall. Uh So it was looking also bad because it was stuttering. Uh-huh. Because Bob, because it, the bandwidth was too much, and so I, I, that's why you know why you have such a wide range of mm-hmm. video quality on names. Like people have to get used to the tools. The the tools themselves have to get better. Mm-hmm. The very first ones were just straight ports. Yep. And the data also on a lot of games was probably a straight port. Because we said, why does Rebel Assault look like shit? I said, I bet anything, Rebel Assault is using the exact same files they use on the PC and or Mac. Mm, yeah. Which meant they were limited to like 150K yeah, and yeah, yeah. whatever you could do on the lowest common denominator One X. CD-ROM yeah. PC mm-hmm. that you had out there. So In PC. Thanks, guys. Oh, we only have one second resolution uh, to address sectors on the CD-ROM drive. And although you can actually address down to 175th of a second, which I found out when I was working on CDTV. Anyway... Exit. Stage left. <laughs> what do you got to tell us, Les? Did you survive some close calls, my poor fool? Moments you thought would be your last? Well, soon those memories will be the happy ones from your visit here. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one um, is a very... Um, key poor level basically the the economy of keys is such that if you don't grab everything you can before you start opening doors you will you will run into a dead end you're gonna pre-play it no, we I'm previously gonna... baked a playthrough yeah, at 450 it... degrees <laughs> yeah. so I, th- I think i'm gonna pre-play that before we, before we jump into that um Oh, it's like we've been edited. Um, okay. So. We, could, we could put in some FMV and just record the video and use it and insert it wherever. Sure. Here's an example. Like, if you think it's a bit boring in the middle of the video or something, while you're slogging down the hallway, here, for comparison's sake, here's Easy Flix. <laughs> I, well, actually, here's Cinepack. Here's Cinecrap. I was, kind of, I was actually surprised that Soccer Kid uses Cinepack because like, I always thought that since 3DO published that, mm-hmm. they would have, you know. Oh, showcased their, um... you know. I'm pretty sure Killing Time was probably like one of the first Easy Flex things. Catapult. Woohoo. <laughs> yep, they clearly use the uh, fast boot, whatever, on this. Yeah, so we're loading up uh, the far- beginning of Killing Time as a comparison. Of- I'm off the rocky coast of Maine, heading toward the island of Metinicus, alone. My Egyptology professor, Dr. Hargrove, was always recounting... Yeah, I think this is They were flicks. scarfing... The, the Prelinger archives had just become available, hadn't they? Because that's where they got a lot of this stuff. The clock supposedly had I love the fact that the film grain kind of helps hide the compression artifacts. That's true, yeah. And whatever Hargrove found... But that kind of dissolved there would just be a nightmare for Cinepak with the, the pixel shatter effect or whatever they have yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Pixel dissolve. It has led me to Aristes Conway's island estate. So it's nearly full screen. Lots of motion. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this was one designed by... I got a, I'm blanking on his name. Basically... Take advantage of all these strengths of the 3DO hardware. Use as much of the 3DO hardware as he could for mm-hmm. like color space expansion. First conversion. glimpse of the house. The weather's getting worse, but I'm almost assured. I fear my life may be in danger, but I have come prepared. Hmm, that's strange. My watch has stopped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you say that was about. Was and then another one I, I'm pretty sure is using oh. Easy Flicks is the opening to uh, Battle Sport. What did Snowjob use? That was that had better have been Easy Flicks. Okay. That's late. unless they had for some reason because you had to transition to like the the what's that QuickTime VR thing before it was QuickTime VR mm. that they have in there where it's like it's missed but you can look around in like the virtual sphere kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it actually predates QuickTime VR. Mm. So. Yes, you can look around in the sphere. Trip. Which is if you want, to, map. If you want yeah. to have, well, it's a little late to try and enforce that patent, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Prior art, uh-huh. Uh-huh. but uh, yeah, it was like mist with a mm-hmm. with a cube with a spherical map or whatever. But yes, <laughs> this is like that game. This is the spiritual successor to Monster Manor, yep. sort of, sort of, yeah. 
Actually, I, I wish they, I, I wish it could be get um, we, we, the art designer for this, uh, which was Kim previously Tempest. yeah, which was previously going to be called Time to Die. Yeah, but apparently I don't know if that name was already taken because they had a, a contest at the studio to rename mm -hmm. the game, and this is what they came up with. Yeah, I don't know. They didn't say who. If anybody came up with it, probably some marketing person. But mm -hmm. uh, my suggestion for uh, the title was Mobster Manor. <laughs> <laughs> nice because <laughs> it's like well it's what it is essentially yeah, it's monster yeah. manor with the uh, mobsters yeah so <laughs> it's like gee i wonder what the sequel to <laughs> now, so you were saying um the, the 3d zero sorry forum uh was discussing the various flavors of killing time out there um there there was no successful ending to the 3DO version of Killing Time, was there not? Uh, my understanding... Yes, well, no, there is a successful ending. Well, there's, I mean, there's the what we're kind of we're kind of spoiling it here, but you get, you, you, you collect all the things and you destroy all the other things, and when you destroy the last thing, then you get this video, which makes it look like you failed. And no, you... no, you get, well, no, depending on what you do in the game, you get right. different videos. One is you're trapped in the manor. Yeah. Another is, I think, there's another one... I... I, it's been forever and I haven't sadly right. I can't look at the thread right now I could actually but um, <laughs> there's a video where like Tess kills the main bad guy who's been following you yeah like the, the roided out guy with the yes mm -hmm. the where different implements you, and on the, right and then and then but you actually are allowed to I think there's actually a I don't so I, I've got the one where you're trapped in the manor yeah yeah but you have one. to like you have to like if you don't successfully put all her get all the pieces of her jar her uh -huh. jars. Yes. So her soul can be f free. Yeah. You're trapped in the manor, apparently. Huh. Because I thought I had them all. Yes. But apparently there's a bug uh -huh. in the version that so sometimes you you can get trapped. There is an ending where it's like you're leaving the island. There is an ending. Ah. Uh, okay. Now, there is also... And there's also two versions of Killing Time in the sense of... There was is two it... 3D releases. There was like a buggy release. Really? Yes. There's like one that's like with a black disc and one with a red disc, I think. I'm oh. not sure which one. I, I probably the buggy one. Since I probably got my well, well actually yeah, that software. that copy is probably one I got from the dumpsters at 3DO. Oh yeah. You yes. want to talk? Oh, you want to talk about the dumpster diving? Sure. At 3DO? Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty popular at 3DO because one night I found out that 3DO had a mail order. I didn't find out that 3DO had a mail order business that you could just write directly at 3DO and buy the games. Mm -hmm. Well. One night I was dumping something outside the building and I found an entire dumpster full of 3DO games that apparently have been our returns to either the mail order thing or their, I don't know if they were returns from directly from people like GameStop or whatever, huh. but they were, they were returns. Um, but most of these games were perfectly good. They were just returned for whatever reason. Right. I guess 3DO just would just write them off or whatever, throw them in the dumpster mm -hmm. and that's it. But like I said, these were perfectly good games. Some of them still in their shrink wrap, um, and so it became a habit of me and a few other people to fish them out. Every yeah, you know, every we, we figured out like what days they would do this, and we would just go <laughs> and fish them out. Uh -huh. And I would keep a stack in a, a cabinet, a metal cabinet, like right mm -hmm. behind me. And there are some really good games in there too. So, and probably the most returned game was Killing Time, and it's probably because there was uh, there was. There really? was two I would have versions. thought it would be JPI. No. Oh, no. No, uh, no I, I rarely saw JPI. Huh. But anyway, so... Well, JPI was the pack-in, but, I mean, so there was nowhere to return it. Well, there is no... Well, no, JPI was... Well, after? Because JPI was not the pack... Was going to be the pack-in, but remember, Crash and Murder was the pack-in. No, 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 no. So here's, here's, here's the sequence. So JPI was supposed to be the pack-in, but it took, like, eight months too long. So Crash and Burn became the pack-in. Right. Um, then JPI finally got published, published um, standalone. Uh... <clears throat> And uh, and the sales tanked because it was awful. Oh, the game's playing itself. So then they finally convinced um, uh, Panasonic to make it the pack-in for like the cost-reduced whatever or something. Not for the FC10. No, I, my, I, don't no, know, because, I know. I know the FC10. No, but because it, my FC10. For a while, it was it was a pack-in, and they my said, FC10 hey, came with guests. And they said, "Hey, Jurassic Park Interactive sold fifty thousand units." This is like, yes, and how many of those were the pack-in? You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, because my pack-in on the FC10 that I got mm -hmm. was Gex. So oh, okay. So I would. There's uh, one I'd like to see again. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's probably one of the more memorable ones. To pull some Gex cred when I. Anyway, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, the uh, Killing Time was far and away the most 
popular uh-huh. uh, return that ended up in the dumpster behind 3DO. And it was uh-huh. probably because there was a there was a glitch in the first pressing. Mm-hmm. They pressed, uh, and you could apparently just write into 3DO and get it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you had to send. You probably. I hope you had to send on the disc because it was yeah, good. Yeah, I got this glitch cup. Yeah, but or at least the receipt or something. Um, so there was a lot of returns on that. And so when people would come visit 3DO and we'd like, you know, if somebody's visiting, you'd always like, can we give them some games? And they used to go to like the admin, but they stopped doing that. And the people just come to me because I had a, a cabinet yeah. full of them. Uh, the second most popular one, popular, dubious distinction, uh, <laughs> was Doom. Really? Yes. Huh. Zadnos was in there quite a bit too, hmm. which was great because that had a free controller with it ah, yes. and it's a really good That's one right. too a it's a logic it's yeah. a logitech pad too Ooh. it's a really good one yeah so i god knows i have probably or used to i i've over the years i've kind of given them away mm-hmm. uh i used to have like dozens of those logitech pads even if i didn't have the zodnos game i would have lots of i would have the pad i didn't keep many of the big my, my, many of them had damaged boxes because they're outer boxes so i just had the jewel case mm-hmm. luckily most of these had a jewel case with them um, but yeah, it pretty much saw like almost every title in my collection that, uh, well, not every title. I bought a lot of them outright, um, mm-hmm. because before I had this radio, but like a lot of the lesser known titles, the oddball titles in my collection came from, you know, the dumpster. Huh. And well, the other half, the other half came from when 3DO cleaned out its, uh, library of, uh, titles that they got that they had as a, as they had, 3DO had this requirement that, um, they had to have X number of copies in their vault mm. of any title. And so I think they had this, like every, every disc that got pressed, 3DO always got 10 copies, I think, oh, at okay. least. And so um, th- this, these, of course, took up a lot of space because there were a lot of 3DO titles mm-hmm. worldwide. And so one day late, late in 3DO's lifetime, mm-hmm. they just put them all out in the cafeteria. And let everybody in there and oh. take. And so I got some nice rare ones. There were some that I was like, I know now are rare. I, uh-huh. And I know I saw them there. I was like, oh, I didn't pick it up because it looked like crap. Like uh, ones that sell sell a lot on eBay. Like there was a, that Alfred Hitchcock, a Japanese Alfred Hitchcock title that hmm. fetches a pretty pain. There's some Korean titles that are just worth a ton of money. I, re- I remember that there were a lot of um, Asian pressings yeah. in there about, and because like, like because I, I didn't read japanese but or i have any Asian japanese languages. versions of like most every and then yeah. a lot of these games are totally playable mm-hmm. i mean most japanese games work on a 3do period but i mean they're completely playable even if you don't speak yeah. japanese although there was no region coding yes yeah yes yes another 3do benefit but sometimes yeah. they'd use the kanji font uh, which didn't exist on the north uh, american like, consoles and okay, then they yeah. would work mm-hmm. very few there's only like three or four i think that applies to most of the asian ones are totally playable um, mm-hmm. even if you don't speak the language because they're just the American version like the version I have I, all my relatives have like Japanese versions of things like Soccer Kid and Starfighter just because <laughs> That's I had you, you yeah I had those ti- I had those titles available <clears throat> Starfighter was another one that showed up a lot in the dumpster I think it's because 3DO published it and a lot of people mail ordered it that they mm-hmm. had a lot of copies of that that they just threw out and these were perfectly good copies they just like threw out a lot of, like, a lot of the studio ones would show up in there um hmm. But every so often you get, you know, <laughs> other publishers. Did, did 3D only mail order their own stuff or everybody's stuff? I They must have done other people too. Mm-hmm. But certain games I never saw. I don't think I ever saw an EA game in there, hmm. in the dumpster. Um, so they were acting as distributor, I guess, maybe for some of the smaller titles yeah, or yeah. some, not smaller titles, but mm-hmm. smaller labels that weren't invested mm-hmm. in publishing 3do as much um i don't say like quarantine was probably another one of those uh, i would see in there um some of the interplay titles um but yeah it was <laughs> that was and a lot of these were like really good titles like yeah yeah <laughs> and a lot yeah, last last three year titles so it was like uh captain quasar uh battle sport a lot of battle sports which was a great one just to hand out to people because it's a great title Oh, God. Plus, like, a zillion copies of Maps of Death. Oh, wow. So, Return Fire Maps of Death showed up a lot, too, in there. Wow. So. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to cover Return Fire at some point. Yes, we most definitely okay. will. Because uh, we both used to work for that guy, too. <laughs> well, uh, thank you all for joining us uh, through this uh, somewhat haphazard installment. Um, 
Dual and wielding. Oh, do, yeah. <laughs> and uh, again, thanks very much. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>